What is going on guys? I am very excited for today's model kit. Look at that. Kotobukiya has done it again. Starting off their new line of Sosai Shoujo Teien kits. These are basically bringing together, I think fans in, of like all worlds can come together for this. For fans of like collecting PVC figures, to fans of building GK like resin garage kits, to fans of just building regular model kits. You've got all of that here with these kits. So they're basically like Kotobukiya's lines of like Megami device, frame arms girls like that, but without all the mecha stuff, without the weapons, without the armor, they're just building actual just regular schoolgirl figures. So, but basically, but it's a model kit. And also they say, or what I've heard about this line so far is that the construction also was supposed to be a little bit more simple as well too. So uh, less parts, I guess maybe is what that means, but it's gonna go together to make for a pretty cool uh, little kit there, if that's what you're into. And I realize it's not gonna be for everyone, uh, but I think it's pretty cool. I think Kotobukiya has really got a line on exactly what kind of stuff is going to sell, and I'm sure this is going to sell very well. So I'm really looking forward to checking out this line. Let's go ahead and get started here with the first one in the line. So for the box art here, they've gone with this vertical style box art, which is quite unique, and just this big, full illustration, close-up image there. So just really cool, unique box art for these. Of course, it's typical like Kotobukiya style, really nice finish on the boxes. They feel so soft and nice. You got the logo up here for the new line, Sosai Shoujo Teien up there, Maroko Yuki, the girl's name here. And then you've got her kind of like signature down here, so it's supposed to look like her signing of the photograph or something like that. Very Japanese. Around here on the bottom of the box, basically the same thing. Let's go over here onto this side. It's also vertical. There's a look at another illustration of the character and the model kit there itself. So face parts, of course, naturally we've got some different face option parts and different hair option parts. You can see there long hair, ponytail, pigtails, like that. And then uh, skirt parts, you've got skirt parts to make it just standing, blowing in the wind, or sitting down. So those are going to be just fixed pose uh, parts, they're not anything like soft rubber or anything like that. Accessories, she's got a cell phone, and a school bag, of course, naturally you've got to have all that stuff. Over here on this side of the box, here is a sample photo of an unpainted kit, so you can see exactly how it's going to look straight out of the box. I and mean, it looks pretty good uh, with all the decals on there. So there's the different face option parts there again, and your different eye decals. So you've got eye decals for the three different faces, and basically like looking straight or looking to the left or looking to the right options there. You've got some uh, water side decals here. They're going to be four around on her sailor kind of schoolgirl uniform there at the top, and these polka dot ones for her cell phone, making the cell phone polka dot as you can see here in this image. Let's go ahead and get it popped open. And relatively small box with this, not very large, but the list price still 5,400 yen, so it's still gonna be a little bit pricey. There's the uh, puzzle piece stand for it. So it's interesting they're using the puzzle piece, so not really a fan of that. I just like the circular stands they use with like the Megami device kits. I would have preferred that, uh, but puzzle piece, okay, fine. All right, I got it. Bunch more bags of runners there, and our face parts, some other pre-printed parts. We'll take a look at those all here in just a minute. Let's just take a look at the manual first. So just like with the front of the box, the manual is just the big uh, illustration there on the back side, just uh, that little logo there. I should also mention this is like what uh, is the Toho High School Winter Clothes version of this. So there is also a P Bandai version that's in like different color clothing. I should mention. Oh, but this is interesting here on the inside of the manual. Well, over here, just starting off, uh, there's just, again, just the character, some different uh, sample images there of the different hair and face options that you can make with this, I guess, something like that. I guess you don't have all of these face options, I should say, so that's unfortunate that they included some different faces and illustrations that you can't actually make with this. Uh, but then they have uh, just the clothing there laid out and this uh, table and chair set, which is a separate set that you can buy separately. I, don't, I didn't buy that. I'm not going to buy that and review that. Uh, but there, that is also available if you wanted to set up some scenes with this. But this is really cool up here, showing some different paint schemes that you can do with this. So it's not just something that Kotobuki often does in their manual. So it's got a magical look with a, a different color scheme there. And military look with the addition of these, uh, this like, military belt on there as well too. I'm guessing that's maybe from uh, just some other different line or something. Or maybe even just scratch belt. I don't know. I imagine that's not from a little armory set or something like that. I don't know. But it would be like Kotobuki made if they're including it in the manual, I would suppose. But our parts list is a separate thing, either that or somehow my page didn't get stapled into the book or something for some reason, but it seems like just a separate page here. And the color, and it's all in color here for the parts list, so you got that there. The rest of this just goes through all of the construction as normal. Let's go back here to the back to the end here. Got our original color simulation, so I guess if you wanted to scan this into your computer or something like that, you've just got the line art there, you can test out some different colors, or you can take a picture, you can do whatever you need to do 
to get that uh, artwork to use for testing out color schemes. That's cool. And you even got down here, you can put as your sample. So like for the skin, for the hair, for the clothes, all like that, you can just pop in the colors right there. But over here is some uh, sample colors based on the, you know, the actual color of the kit. So you've got all that laid out there for you. Let's check out the runners. All right, so first up there is just another look at those water side decals in typical Kotobukiya fashion. They do look very nice. You got a lot of nice colors in there in the eyes and everything looks pretty good. And our face option parts, we'll see these in use on the kit here momentarily once I've got it all built up. But there you go. Again, like I said, they look fantastic. And a couple of pre-painted parts here. You got some pink on skin tone plastic color parts there for some pants so two different ones looks like it looks like so you got some options there with that uh, and then your part there for her color for her uniform is also pre-printed with the white on there already that's really nice this is actually runner R, but I'm just gonna skip ahead and show this one to you guys first. This is our hand options, and as you can see, they're kind of like half hands because they're gonna be like half hidden in the sleeves of her uniform. So all right, starting off, our first few runners are all hair parts, starting off with runner A here. These are all in this dark brown color. Would have been nice to have, uh, you know, maybe another set of hair option parts in a different color. Uh, but you know, you got at least you got a lot here and you can paint them if you're so inclined. Here's the B runner and the, the C runner is that one with some different bangs options and then the D runner a few more on there. So you'll have lots of hair options with this as we saw. Runner E is then some skin tone parts here as you can see, mostly kind of like internal skin tone parts, joints and things like that. And then runner F here in brown is gonna be for the shoes. Runner G here in skin tone is some parts for the thighs, it looks like. And then runner H is a set of faces here, obviously without the decals or anything on there. So if you wanted to do some custom painting or something, you don't have to sacrifice stripping the pre-painting off these. You've got a full set of faces here that you can then paint and put the eye decals on. So that's nice. Runner I here is in this light yellow color for her sweater. And as I mentioned, the hands were kind of half hidden in the sleeves. And that's what you'll see here on all these parts here, or like the ends of her sleeves that the hands are going to be plugged into. Runner J here is a few more little parts in that light yellow color. And the same thing for runner K, we've got two of these, it's basically just going to be our wrist joints. Runner L is one little piece here in dark blue. And runner M here obviously are skirt parts and they're definitely in a more matte finish which looks really nice. Runner N would be then the parts for the lower leg for the socks, once again in a matte finish, very dark blue color. Runner O is a couple parts here in red for her scarf necktie. Runner P is a couple parts here for her, in her hair. It's in a little bit more yellow than the light yellow we saw for her sweater. Runner Q in a light blue color is for her school bag. Runner T is the cell phone parts. I mean, we've got two of these. It looks like we've got like doubles or like multiples of a lot of these. And you can see these are slightly different though in that this one, like the full surface is all like flat, but this one, the surface is a little bit indented. So I guess that's probably for if you wanted to like put some sort of like clear part in on the front of there or something to make it actually look like clear and glossy. Or maybe it just like it's indented so it'd be easier to drip uh, just like putting some, I don't know, gloss paint. You just like drip it into there and it would just like fill in the space, something like that. So I think that's probably why they made it like that. That's really cool. And finally, runner U in this really nice peach color is the base. Now, like I said, not really a fan of the whole uh, shape of the base, really, to be honest, but at least it is included. You get a base and it's in a nice color anyway. So there you have it, guys. I mean, like looking at it, there's not a lot of plastic in there really necessarily for the price for around 50 bucks so the price does seem a little bit high honestly for what you get out of it i mean obviously i haven't built it up yet so let me build it up i'll let you guys know my thoughts i mean the quality looks great i mean they look it looks like it's going to be a really nice looking kit but i do have my concerns a little bit about the price but let me go ahead and build it up and i'll let you guys know what i think all right, here she is all built up. And I gotta say, really great looking kit. Uh, it was very familiar if you've built a lot of Megami device, Frame Arms Girls, that type of kit. You know, it's it's similar to that, but there definitely is a lot of differences in the way this goes together. It certainly does live up to uh, Kodobukiya's claim that this is gonna be a more simpler kit. You can definitely tell building it. That it is a more simpler design and there's definitely less parts involved and things like that. And so I think that is good and bad in some ways. On the bad side, I, I still don't think that this kit really needs to be as expensive as it is. So it does seem a little bit expensive. And the pretty basic construction, low parts counts, I mean, may not really be all that appealing for people when you're building the kit. It goes together quite quickly. And so you might just feel a little bit kind of disappointed, like and you wish there was a little bit more going on with it. Um, that said, I think it does look pretty good for the most part. I mean, you might be missing some of the articulation that the Megami device or Frame Arms Girls kits have. Uh, this is a little bit maybe less in some certain areas most notably the torso as the torso of this you know is just not really having the same number of articulation points as a megami device kit for example but overall, like i said i think it looks great you got some really nice option parts in here as well too so let's go ahead and take a look at all of those 
So the first accessory, of course, going to be this stand. Like I said, not really a big fan of its puzzle piece shape. I would have just preferred just a regular circular one like with the Megami device kits, but this just plugs right into that hole there on her back. Now, if you didn't want to have this on the base, there's nothing to, to plug that hole, so that's kind of a shame. That said, one thing that you could do was would be to just cut off a piece of the runner because this should be three millimeters, the exact same as this hole. So just cut off a little piece of the runner, stick it right in there, and then just kind of sand it flat, maybe add a little glue or something. Even without painting it, you could basically make it look like the hole was never there pretty much with this matching color of the plastic if you wanted to do something like that. But anyway, if you've built any Megami device kits, then you should be aware of how this base works. Basically, it's a ball joint at the bottom and a ball joint at the top. So you can kind of move this around and the kit doesn't really weigh that much. So even though this base is very simple, it's more than enough uh, to hold up the weight of the kit in any pose that you'd want. So if it's just like a standing pose like this or a jumping pose like that, it's going to be a little wobbly, obviously. But, you know, if you just have it on there, it's going to support the weight of the kit just fine. So simple, but very effective base. Here is the bag, very simple as well too, but looks nice. So it does have a seam line on the bottom of that is where it's gonna be most notable. On the top, the seam is kind of hidden by just the kind of zipper or whatever there. So we'll have a little bit of a seam, but otherwise I think the bag looks nice and it definitely could use some uh, customization. I mean, if you guys are familiar with you know, Japanese schoolgirls, they love to have all sorts of different custom keychains and things like that. So, you know, just maybe once again, go back to your just leftover runners or something and just carve out a little, I don't know, just like a teddy bear looking thing or something to carve out of your leftover plastic on the runners and just make a little keychain or something like that to go on there. Could look pretty cool. You got your two versions of the cell phone there, the one with the flat screen and the one with a little bit of an indent there for the screen. On the back side, they're just gonna be exactly the same, just with that little bit on there to look like the camera or whatever on the back side or the, the front side of the phone. And so yeah, just simple little accessory. You've got the alternate neck piece for if you wanted to plug a Megami device head on this instead, you'll need a different size ball joint from what's on there at the moment. And speaking of swapping heads, actually you have full heads. So when you want to swap to a different hairstyle, you can just swap the entire head. You don't have to disassemble anything. And if you wanted to swap out the faces, of course, you'd have to uh, just remove the bangs part off the front. But uh, just for changing the hairstyle is very easy as all you have to do is just swap the entire head. So it's nice that they gave you all the parts to make three full heads. A lot of times on these other kits and Megami device kits, you can't make actually full versions of the heads. You have to swap more parts. Uh, than like just the the face anyway, so that's really cool. So anyway, here you can see a couple of the different face option parts there: the happy one, the puffing out her cheeks, angry one, the surprised one, and the fourth one here, the worried face. So I'll swap some of those out a little bit later, but again, it's pretty easy to do. So all you do is just to remove the bangs on the front of the head there. I know it's going to look a bit odd and just uh, remove the face like that. And we'll talk more about the articulation of the kit in full here in a minute, but just while we're on the topic of the hair, this hair is a little bit articulated and these side bits will move. So if you have the head like pointed down like that, you can move these a little bit to the front so they just look a little bit more natural in their posing. The back of the hair is still going to look a bit weird as you still have these parts sticking up like that, but a little bit of articulation with that. Obviously with the other uh, heads to the other hairstyles, these will also rotate those bits on there so you can move those around and then the ponytail one as well too. That can also move around on there. For our skirt option parts, you've got just the simple basic one and then you've got this one, which is made to look a bit more like it's sort of blowing in the wind, I guess. So again, if you had it in like a running or jumping pose or something like that, all you do is basically just uh, separate the top and bottom half of the body there, swap out the different skirt, put that back on, and there you go, like that. You got a different look for the skirt. And then the other skirt option for is for when she's sitting. Now, when she's sitting, you will have to do a little bit more part swapping as the angle of articulation for these legs wouldn't really uh, wouldn't really look quite right for sitting. So what they've done is just giving you a whole new kind of uh, lower section of the body there to swap out. So you just swap out that whole bit like that. And the legs are easy enough. You just pull out that section like that from the thighs. So you'll just swap these out. And that's how you can do sitting poses like that, easy enough. Now, the last thing is all of our different hand options. So you've got some just like kind of uh, closed hands here, just kind of holding on to the ends of the sweater. And what you do with these is not swap out the hand, but you swap out the whole like cuff of the sweater there as well too. So here, for example, you also have a set of peace sign hands, all these for the left and the right, by the way, you've got uh, left and right options for all the different hands. We've also got a set of cell phone holding hands, some larger holding hands with a hole in there. I'm pretty sure these are for holding the cups that come with the accessory set that you can get with this. That, like I said, it comes with, like a table and chairs and some like cups of some drink that you can get to make it look like it's holding a drink. You've got another set of holding hands, which I'm not exactly sure what these are intended for, but they 
also look to be about the same size as what the, you would use for handles of MSG option weapons. So if you wanted to use some like a MSG rifle or something like that, you could, uh, I think, probably hold these with these hands. And then we've got a just regular set of open hands like that. Not necessarily for holding anything, but just for being open, stretched out like so. But let's go ahead and go over the articulation here. So the head will go up and down and turn all that stuff. Now here on the torso is where I was talking about the lack of articulation where on Megami device kits and stuff you would have a break between the top and the middle of the torso there that you would have a point of articulation where you don't have that with this one as it's just all one solid piece. You'd have some articulation between the hip section and the torso though so you can kind of move that a little bit here and there like that forward and back that's going to be about the extent of it though like that and of course there's some a little bit of rotation here as well too but not all that much really. Shoulder joints work about the same so they're just on a little ball joint up there. You can also raise the arm up and up to about there like that and then rather than rotating here at the bicep it actually rotates at the elbow joints so that whole elbow joint rotates but as you can see when you rotate that it actually comes out of the joint a little bit like that so it's kind of best not to rotate that too much but as you can see you got a bend here and a seam line on the arm of the sweater here and on the side as well too so you got seam lines on the arms that's also pretty normal from gummy device kits and every other kit sort of like this as well too there is in theory the same type of wrist joint as you have with Megami device kits in there that should allow, allow you to bend it but it's just because of the shape of it it doesn't really actually allow for that too much you can just basically rotate the hand on there like so and the legs of the hips will move basically as far as the skirt will allow the skirt just being a solid piece you can only just move the legs you know within that space within the skirt that's a little bit more kind of like flying out like that obviously you'd have a little bit more leg articulation a range of movement there with that but otherwise it's going to be pretty basic you have some space to move those around but not all that much. And of course, you've got a bend here at the knee that's gonna give you just about that much like that before, again, you're gonna be pulling it out of the joint if you pull that anymore. An ankle will kind of bend a little bit side to side and then obviously move forward <laughs> to a point where it just looks completely unnatural and then back like that, which looks pretty good. The shoes are quite nice as well too. You got a couple of parts making those up, so painted up, those should look uh, pretty nice in there as well too. Now I mentioned how there's the table and chairs set that Kodobuki also put out to go along with this. Now I didn't get that, but uh, Hasegawa makes a line of a series of different 112 scale stuff that has been out for years. So I've had this kit for, for quite a while and there's a couple of the ones they make they also make like a capsule machine and like a bench and things like that that you can get uh, this is a set of three desks and chairs that you get in this it's 112 scale so it's the same scale to match these so this kind of stuff exists uh, if you wanted to get something probably a little bit easier to get your hands on and certainly a lot cheaper from Hasegawa just check out the different 112 scale Hasegawa accessories uh, that they make like this so here's just a quick build up of uh, one set but like I said you get three in the set and you also get this piece here too which you can just act as your kind of a floor and I'm not sure how well that matches the <laughs> Japanese school fl uh, floor but there you go, just for an example. But there you have it, guys. So like I said before, I am I know that this kind of kit is not going to appeal to everyone, but I do think that it's just cool that Kodobuki went ahead and made something like this. I think they know the, their audience. They know what's going to sell, and they know how popular the Megami Device and Frame Arms Girls type kits are. And so to go ahead and make a kit like this, that, like I said, it's just sort of also blends the line a little bit between people who are fans of like building the model kits, like the Megami Device and Frame Arms Girls uh, Mecha Musume kits, and then also people who like also doing like garage kits, character figures and things like that, resin kits that you would get uh, from different shows like Wonderfest and things like that. So this basically kind of allows people to kind of blend those hobbies together, making just a kind of normal person, not like any sort of super character with mecha stuff or things like that, weapons or anything, but just like a normal kind of uh, school girl. But obviously you could customize this with weapons or something like that if you wanted to, and I'm sure there's certainly going to be plenty that we're going to see uh, customized versions of this kit. Like I said, this this line just started and we got a second kit in the line that's coming out, I think in a couple months, and I don't know how, how far they're going to take it, but I'm sure as long as people keep buying the kits, they're going to keep making different versions of them, and I'm sure people are going to keep buying them, no doubt. So... 
This line for the time being, I'm sure, is going to be here to stay, so I think it's a pretty pretty cool one. I enjoy it. It's cool. It's interesting. Something different. Like I said, I always enjoy building something different, so it's always cool to check out different things uh, from Kotobukiya and other model producers and stuff as well, too. So anyway, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm sure you will. And if you guys want to check out the kits, like I said, we'll be carrying them here at the USA Gundam store. So if you want to check the link to USA Gundam store, uh, that's down below in the video description as well. You can save 10% off everything there at the store using the coupon code Zakorelli. 10 so check that out and everything there on the site and as always guys thank you so much for your support liking the video commenting subscribing all that's also greatly appreciated it's a cool kit so definitely check it out if you're interested it's just a little bit of a hard price tag to swallow but i think overall it's a lot of fun to kind of just kind of play around with and you can certainly customize it to your heart's content as well too so for now guys thank you so much for watching i'll see y'all later bye guys